Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of ordering numbers. This is standard 6.2D in the great state of Texas. We are using item number 15 off the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we've got a simple table of how long each student practiced the trumpet. It's all one hour and then a fraction. And then we need to find least to greatest. So we're just putting these in order. But we cannot compare these fractions as they are because they each have different denominators. So we've got two options here, and I'll show you both of them. First, we can just change everything into a decimal. And seeing as how everything has got a whole number of one, let's just look at the fractions. So how do we change a fraction into a decimal? Well, it's pretty simple. You just divide up. So let's start with this 2 thirds right here. So that dividing up means you take your denominator and put it up in your, into your numerator. And so you're going to divide 3 up into 2. It's always going to be 0 to begin with unless it's an improper fraction, which is fine. But you can add a decimal and a 0 and you're just going to move on. So that's going to be 6, because that's 18. And, oh, look at that. We're going to be repeating because we're down to 20 again. 6, 18, and that's just going on again and again and again. So this is going to be 6 repeating. So I'm going to call this 1.6, and then a little repeating bar, because that 6 just goes on forever. 1 half is fairly simple, but just in case you're not uh, aware of what that is, this is a benchmark fraction. This and two-thirds should be those uh, that you memorize. That's why we call them benchmark fractions. But two goes into 10 five times, so it's really just 0 0.5. And so let's call this 1.5 here. Now my 1 fourth, another benchmark fraction we should hopefully have memorized, but if not, think of 1 quarter. 1 uh, fourths are also called quarters, and well, we know how much a quarter is worth. So we've got a decimal here, we're going to bring down 10. 4 goes into 10 two times, it's going to be 8, lots of long division here. We can always add extra zeros at the end. And so 4 goes into 25 times, and that's why we call fourths quarters because they're worth 0.25. So let's call this 1.25. And since that is going to the hundreds place, let's go ahead and just add. We're going to extend that 66. We're going to make put that as 0 so we can at least compare. Now 7 twelfths is a lot more difficult, so I just went ahead and did that without showing you. But it's 0.58, so I'm going to call that 1.58. And then it's got a 3 repeating. That 3 just goes on forever, which means I need to add some numbers up here to make these go up to the thousands place. So we can compare that way. What is the other way? Well, we can change all of these to the same denominator. We have to find the least common denominator between 3, 2, 4, and 12. Well, guess what? All of these numbers could be changed into 12. So this 1 and 7 twelfths is going to work. So I'm just going to write that right there. 1 and 7 twelfths. But what about my 2 thirds? How can I change that into twelfths? Well, you need to multiply the 3 times something to get up to twelfths. You can multiply by 4. So I'm going to multiply 4 over 4 because that's 1, which means I'm just multiplying it by 1. So an equivalent fraction of 1 and 2 thirds is 1 and 8 twelfths. Let's do the same thing with this half right here. So what can I multiply by? 2 to get up to 12, that's 6. So I'm going to multiply 6 over 6 because that's 1. So it's really 1 and 6 twelfths. And I could do the same thing here with this 1 fourth. So 4 times something is going to make 12. Let's see, 4 times 3. So 3 over 3, that's multiplied by 1, which means we're just changing the way it looks. 1 and 3 twelfths. A little scrunch there. But you see this that's what each of these equal right here. And we can compare either way. We're looking for least to greatest. So it looks like any way we look at it, my smallest is going to be Ryan. My list needs to start with Ryan, which means let's get rid of this one and this one. And then my next smallest is going to be Gus. So it's going to be Ryan and Gus, which means that doesn't work. And so that's our answer.